Hi, my name is Gene McDaniels. I've been known by lots of names. I'm not going to divulge all of them, but maybe a few. They call me Gene. My first girlfriend called me King Goo Goo. The report of my demise has been greatly exaggerated. I'm just a hermit and I live in my cave up in Maine. It's nice. I like it. I want to first make a shout out to the uh, hip hoppers who have sampled my music and turned it into fantastic hits for themselves and great source of pride for myself. And I'm glad to be a part of the hip hop movement, however remotely, however intimately. I want to talk to you about my first hit song that I wrote and in so doing I also want to thank Les McCann for doing Compared to What. It was amazing to have spent all my money setting up this publishing company because I'm going to be a writer and a publisher and, and uh, there was a second or two there that I thought oh my god what have I done. And, uh, but, you know, the fates decreed, declared, decided whatever that I be successful with this venture. It was a massive gamble. Took my last dollar. And so for nine months I was like sleeping with friends. <laughs> I slept in uh, Washington Square Park in New York City, down the village, uh, a couple of nights there. <laughs> but, um, hey, it, uh, it turned out okay. What can I say? God is great, and I'm grateful, and, and here I am. So, I'm hopefully going to do a series of these little short conversations to tell you about the songs. And compared to what was um, inspired by the right-wing push toward um, uh, globalization and, and privatization, et cetera, et cetera, kind of acing out the normal people in the world like myself and you, okay? So I started writing about it. I didn't even know anybody was going to be interested in it. But it's okay. I, I appreciate it, believe me, because uh, uh, my actual survival was on the line, you see. So Les McCann was my candidate. When I wrote this song, he was in my mind to do this song. But the caveat is Les McCann and I were not speaking at the time. We had worked together earlier in the 60s, in 61, 62, and um, <laughs> His company wouldn't allow me to sing on record with him, so we had a conundrum. We had this wonderful group, and people lined up outside trying to get in, because Les is an immediate draw. People love him, because he's so degenerate. <laughs> That's what I love about him. He is a degenerate. This guy will say and do almost anything has the biggest heart in the world. He is probably one of God's humor points because he's an angel. He's an angel. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. God love him. So I, I convinced him to do the song. First, I apologized for, for all of what went down. I left the group and, and, and it was stupid, but I, I had to do something. I was panicked about my career, so I did what I did. And I apologize on camera. Les, are you listening? <laughs> I love you, man. Um, and phone rings, pick up the phone, I'm listening. Guy says to me, congratulations. And I said, congratulations? He says, yeah. He says, you've got the number one jazz tune. <laughs> <laughs> in the world. And I said, what are you talking about? And, I, and then it dawned on me and I said, what's the title? 
He said, compared to what? I said, that's mine. Yes, I'll take it. And from there on, my life has been, from then on, and from there on, my life has been fantastic because it's allowed me to continue writing, which is the most important part for me. I am, um, I dived out of the nightclubs because of the smoke and the loud talk and the booze, the irreverence to the music. I mean, it drove me nuts. So I have been out of the nightclub scene since 1971 for sure, and more like 1968. Uh, as a general overall picture. So we're going to play Les's version of Compared to What. Nice talking to you. I love the lie and lie the love. I'm hanging on, we push and shove. Possession is the motivation that is hanging up. The goddamn nation looks like we always end up in a rut. Everybody now trying to make it real compared to what 